Stuart Jaggi of the Financial Times. Welcome back to the Farnborough Air Show. The rise of leasing has enabled the makers of airliners to swell their order books to record levels. But how sustainable is that? With me are Pierre Vellet, former head of fleet planning at Air France, now a consultant to both airlines and manufacturers. And Eddie Pienzek, head of consultancy at the Ascend Aerospace Consultancy. Plus Max Kingsley-Jones, editor of Flight Global's Airline Business Magazine. Flight Global is hosting this event at its media center here at Farnborough. There are a number of new entrants to the airliner market, such as Bombardier of Canada, and especially China's Comac. Can their products compete with the next generation of aircraft from the big two, Airbus and Boeing? Pierre, what do you think? I think that um, it's a different answer from Bombardier and from the Chinese industry. On the Chinese side, they tried for many, many years to be on board of this industry, and I remember when they tried to produce the Chinese copy of the 707, and then they decided to go with the small airplane, the original airplane with the RT-21. With this ART 21 they use a, a, a current uh, fuselage, and they try to update the interior, and they use the GE, the CS-34, to power this airplane. Uh, I think this airplane today maybe could satisfy the local market, but it would be very difficult for them to compete with Embraer or Bombardier. Well, I mean, certainly in terms of technology, with, with the modern fuel-efficient engines that they will have, um, they certainly can, can compete on that level. The question is whether they can uh, do the marketing and sales in the way that Airbus and Boeing can. Um, certainly if they, uh, if they can produce to the, to the kind of production rates that, they've, uh, that they anticipate, they'll be success successful in their own right. Um, however, Airbus and Boeing um, both have large production rate capabilities and they'll probably always capture the largest share of the market. I think for the Chinese, it's the step. This, this aeroplane that we're seeing, the C919, is a step. It, it, may, it will have appeal in the Chinese market. I think it's the next step will be the one that comes after that aeroplane that will, will be able to compete on the West, in the Western market. And for Bombardier, they have a window of opportunity at the moment before the new equipment arrives from Airbus and Boeing. And then as, in the longer term, I think Airbus and Boeing will move up the scale and maybe leave that, the lower end of the market to the players like Bombardier and Embraer. So, the order, book of, order books of the main manufacturers are bursting, but has there been double ordering? Pierre, what's, what's your opinion on that? I think today, um, and back to the comment about the production rate, I think the demand is higher than the offer. So it's the reason why many, many uh, airlines and also they sort of try to sign a speculative, what I could consider a speculative orders, just to, to be sure that they could secure the slots and then we see how they could reassign the slots according to the real need. No, Eddie, can, can the airlines actually absorb all these aircraft? Well, we certainly think so. In our, in our own forecast, if we're looking out for the next five years, um, there's probably still another 1,300 aircraft potentially need to be ordered to fill the, the demand that is out there, especially if GDP growth continues the way it does in the emerging and developing economy. So there's still room for more aircraft to be ordered for the near term. Right, Max, what's your opinion? I think that uh, there is a, an element of double ordering. We see that if you look back through the cycles of the industry in the last 20 years. So you get the booms and the busts, and then the reality is that you get a more flat rate. But certainly the, uh, you know, the, the way that the market is going, production rates will be becoming more sustainable at higher rates in the long term. The values of used jets, meanwhile, have been hit hard with some quite recent aircraft now being unsaleable because of this, the glut of um, aircraft now coming into service. Will this not be a, a problem for both airlines and leasing companies? Yeah. I think that um, the, uh, up to now, the manufacturers, they tried to develop families. When they develop a family, they have always a very optimized member in the family and sub-optimized members through the stretch version and through the shrink version, which is very efficient for the airline operating the family and taking the benefit of the family effect. But at the end, as an asset management, we have to consider that the, success, the most successful product is always the most effective product. So this is the reason why the, the, on the Airbus side and the 
Boeing side, the, the most efficient airplanes are more on 150 and uh, above and not on the, on the short version of the airplane. And Eddie, what do you think? Uh, I mean, there's been a challenge in the whole banking market, the funding market for aircraft in the last four or five years and most of the money, the majority of money today is heading towards new aircraft. The, the banks and the financiers and the lessors have greater comfort funding new aeroplanes. And so with that flight of money going towards new deliveries, um, that's obviously where a lot of the, the aircraft transactions are happening. The used market is a little bit more subdued these days and of course there's concern now over what would happen to some of those used aircraft, whether the useful economic life is going to reduce as a result or not. It remains to be seen. This is, this is a long-term game and it's going to take a few years for that to play out. We've, we've already seen some reduction in the, um, the values of used aircraft. Max, what do you think? I think there's a combination of things. There's the funding and the fact that the money's been going to new aircraft against second-hand aircraft. There's also the fact that the equipment available today is more efficient than aeroplanes that were built just 10 years ago. With, with the fuel prices where they are, there's, it encourages airlines to move those, those old aeroplanes out of their fleet and with, with the availability of funding, bring in more efficient aeroplanes that can do the job with a lower fuel burn. Leasing companies are taking something like 50 to 60 percent of aircraft, new airliners at the moment. How much influence can they have on the shape of aircraft and their equipment? Pierre? In the past, I always used the, uh, the big leasing company to help me or to assist me to, uh, to uh, uh, conduct and to run the right decisions on the uh, airframe manufacturers and then on the engine side to be sure that we can get the, the right product because if I was the only one asking for a specific product, uh, it would be very difficult to be successful. But joining my efforts with the ILFC or ALC today, it could be very efficient. So it means that in the past we try to have a common approach to size and to check what could be the final economics of an airplane through the operating costs. And Eddie? Yeah, I mean, lessors have a vested interest in, in buying the right aircraft at mm. the right price because they have that residual value interest in those airplanes. They need to be able to sell that aircraft on and remarket it and release it. So they need to be choosing the right kinds of aircraft. So they'll be very much involved in the shape and size of aircraft going forward, so right. as they are, will be one of the biggest buyers. Mm. And Max? Yeah, well, I mean, the big buyers, in the industry, ILFC and ALC have a, their uh, senior management have always been very influential in the design of, uh, of the latest aircraft. At the same time, the manufacturers don't always want to listen to them because they were calling for production rate cuts a couple of years ago, and the manufacturers didn't really want to take any notice of them. They felt, you know, uh, they were uh, self-serving requests, so they ignored that. So they listen when they want, and they don't listen when they don't want to. Right. Thank you very much, all of you. Um, we're going to have to leave it here, but. Um this is a debate that has much, much more mileage in it. <laughs>